Okay, so we're gonna go on to about sandwich code this time. So I'm just gonna go open sandwich code and that pops it up here. I'm gonna close about blocks because we're complete with that. Um, this looks like a fun one. Okay, so about sandwich code, count lines, file name. Uh, so this one, uh, we're gonna pass in, this is a, a, a function that takes a file name, it opens the file by the name, it sets the count equal to zero, and then while file.gets, I guess that means, man, that's cool, open file name. I don't know how that, I've no, I don't see that very often. And then it returns the count. So it basically just goes through with each line and with each line, it adds a element to the count and then ensure file.close if file. So we wanna make sure this is uh, error protection. So if there's an error, then we close there, I suppose. So test counting lines. So in our, our example file.txt, if I press command P, that'll pop that up. I can, I can do it like that in Atom, uh, and we get the four, or you can just use your, uh, th uh, whatever this, the file structure view, and then also, um, these are all just visible in Finder or whatever, if, you, if that's the way you prefer to go through it. So anyways, count lines. Uh, how many lines do we have here? One, two, three, four. I think we have five, but I think you need to complete them. I'll say four, and if I look over here, I know it is four. So we save this one, um, and so yeah, that just shows us that we can make a function which counts lines. So we actually execute this, and it goes in and counts all the lines there. Uh, find line, and then we have a file name. So file is equal to open file. Here we do the same thing. So while we're while the file dot gets, so while we're getting the file line, and so if we return line if while line is equal to that line dot match. So it's looking for the first time it has it. E element. It's going to return line. If line is returned, I suppose it breaks us out of this uh, loop. And then this is just error protection, so we close if the file. Um, so yeah, let's open this up. This is a test. E. So it's not going to uh, return until line four. Uh, test finding lines. So find line on the e example test. It's going to be on line four, and it's returning the line. And so the line, my guess is it's just going to be test. T-E-S-T. -E okay, so if I save that and then run this guy by playing rake. <clears throat> well, we were on 179 and now we're on 180. Uh, and we're on, so our Eric was on line 32, which is here. Now it looks like we didn't get it right. It wasn't test, it was test, and then it has this new line on it. And remember how uh, in the previous example, um, the previous example they had, uh, they had a, a method in there that um, removed all the new lines. Well, now we're seeing what happens if you don't remove the new lines. And so in order to get this one correct, we just want to make this one uh, forward slash n. Okay, let's rake that and see if that works. Because I noticed that this is escaping it, which means... It should be something else. But it looks like we're on the line 77 and we were on 32. So we have now passed, okay. So yeah, think about it. The count lines and find line are similar and yet different. They both, yeah, they both follow the pattern of sandwich code. Sandwich code is code that comes in three parts. One, the top slice of bread, two, the meat, and three, the bottom slice of bread. The bread, the bread part of the sandwich almost always goes together, but the meat part changes all the time. Hmm. Because the changing part of the sandwich code is in the middle, abstracting the top and bottom bread slices to the library can be difficult in many languages. Aside from C++, C sharp, sharp programmers, the idiom of capturing allocated pointers is smart pointer constructor is an attempt to deal with the problem sandwich to zero. Huh. Considering the following code. So here we have a file sandwich. It's passing a file name and we yield the file and we close the file if it's a problem. So we write count lines two, file code, do file, uh, file dot gets count plus equals one, count lines two. So here's another one where we write another count line uh, program. Test counting lines two, test count lines two. Uh, so I think it's just saying count lines two, so yeah. Example file, 
count lines two, the file sandwich. So it's going to call this one, which is going to yield whatever block we passed in. So we assert equal. So yeah, it's just going to count the lines again, four. Okay, so this is pretty dense. I'm not exactly following the reasoning behind this, but I think that it's obviously just trying to show us the the, the, the capacity of Ruby to deal with, uh, to pass things like that. So you can have your count lines here, and your count lines actually grabs your file sandwich method, which intertwines these methods pretty gnarly. I don't think that's a great idea. Um, so it's interesting that they're having us do this. So relight, rewrite find line using the file sandwich library function. So here we want to find line two, but we want to rewrite find line using the file sandwich library function. So up here we had our find line uh, method, and we want to use a sandwich method. Um, so yeah, this was a little baffling for me. Um, so I just uh, decided to, I kind of figured it, I think, I'm, I think what we want to do is just essentially copy count lines, except for instead of doing it this way, instead of doing it a, a count. Uh, so I guess that's what they mean by sandwich. Like this is the bread, these are the bread, and then this is the meat of the thing. So we're just going to copy that guy. So we're going to go file sandwich, D -S -S -H, and then we're passing the file name, which we're getting from uh, right the method here, method here, right? And we're going to iterate over that. We're going to say do file. And so end. Okay, so we call file sandwich on the file. And then we do the file. Okay, so, and then we say, um, I think we want to do, well, we want to do it just like here. So we would basically just take this find line code. Yeah, and then come back down here. So find line two. Uh, but this one's count line count. So while file. While file.gets, so while file.gets, I think we can get rid of here. Return line if line match. Okay. Yeah, so file. So first, so we open the file, and then I guess we do the same thing. And so this was going to give us the same results as up here. It should get us uh, test uh, forward slash n. Um, cool. <clears throat> Let's run the rake task and see how that worked out. 181. Uh, 183. So fill me in. It looks like we've moved on <clears throat> to line 108. <clears throat> okay, so 108. Here we are. Um, so let's read this one. Count lines number three. So here they have a third way of counting the lines in the file with four lines. Open the file name. We do the file. Uh, count is equal to zero. To file dot gets count plus equals one. So the count for each line. We're just uh, uh, iterating on the count, and it tests. Open handles the file sandwich when given a block. So open handles the file sandwich when given a block. Open file name. So it opens the file name. Okay, so this is just showing us that this is a shorter way of writing this um, as well, because they've got file.open and then they do something over it. Um, cool. So this is just going to be four. So if I run the rake task, it looks like we are about scoring project. So we're moving on to the next one. That means that we have completed this sandwich code bit. I think the idea here is that, I mean, honestly, I, I don't use a lot of this stuff. I think the idea of intertwining two functions like that would cause a problem. I could see why it would be useful in some situations, especially where you're like iterating over files and things like that. But uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one.